Reminder of the Call Golden Text, 2 Timothy 1-8 So don't be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, or of me his prisoner. Instead, share in suffering for the Gospel, relying on the power of God. Lesson Scripture, 2 Timothy 1-3 to 14 3 I thank God, whom I serve, as my ancestors did, with a clear conscience, as night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers. For recalling your tears, I long to see you, so that I may be filled with joy. 5 I am reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice and, I am persuaded, now lives in you also. 6 For this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. 7 For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love and self-discipline. 8 So do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me his prisoner. Rather, join with me in suffering for the gospel, by the power of God. 9 He has saved us and called us to a holy life. Fear not because of anything we have done but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. 10 But it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior. Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. 11 And of this gospel I was appointed a herald and an apostle, and a teacher. 12 That is why I am suffering as I am. Yet this is no cause for shame, because I know whom I have believed, and am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until that day. 13 What you heard from me, keep as the pattern of sound teaching, with faith and loving Christ Jesus. 14 Guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. Lesson AIM 1, to acquaint ourselves with Paul reminders of God's call 2, to acquaint ourselves with why Timothy be ashamed of Paul, the Lord's prisoner 3, to learn how we can be unashamed of our faith in a world that is increasingly antagonistic to Christ, his people and his word the title for our lesson is Reminder of the Call. Think about situations in which you need reminders of the call to keep going as a Christ follower. This epistle is a pastoral letter written by the Apostle Paul to a young man named Timothy. Paul refers to Timothy as his child in the faith uh, his spiritual son. From these verses we understand that Paul was praying for Timothy non-stop. Paul remembered Timothy's tears the last time they were together. We don't really know exactly what those tears were about, but you get the impression that Timothy's spiritual state was somewhat fragile. Two areas are mentioned in the Bible passage. First, Timothy was not to be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or the gospel. Paul's famous statement in this area is Romans 1.16 that declares, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Second, Timothy was not to be ashamed of Paul and his imprisonment. Certainly, some believers would seek to distance themselves from a Christian leader in jail. This is a natural human tendency when others are persecuted, since we're hoping to avoid the same situation in our own lives. Timothy was told not to fall to this temptation. Rather than being ashamed, Timothy was to welcome the opportunity to stand with persecuted brothers. This verse is a clear example of how God specifically calls believers, at times, to suffer for the cause of Christ. 2 Timothy 3:12. When you at a low point in your faith walk, some reminders will get you back on track. 1. A reminder of godly heritage. 2 Timothy 1-3-5 from his prison cell, Paul encouraged Timothy to recall his rich Christian heritage. He had a mother and a grandmother who loved the Lord. Paul reminded Timothy not only of the example of his grandmother's faith and mother's faith, but also of their love and, most importantly, 
God's love working through them. It was also important for Timothy to remember how he had claimed that faith for himself. All of this provided this young man Timothy with a very solid foundation. Likewise, we should make it our goal to present a Christian heritage to the next generation. 2. A reminder of God's gift. 2 Timothy 1-6-7 we should have no shame about our calling or fear about where we are headed he had received a special gift from God when he was ordained, he had received great teaching from Paul. Timothy was a disciple of Jesus Christ and a co-laborer with the Apostle Paul. In the ministry the Bible gives us various insights into the life and character of Timothy. Timothy, from the scriptural account, was faithful, loyal and trustworthy. 3. A reminder to be steadfast amid suffering, 2 Timothy 1-8-14, Paul was imprisoned, and others, who had once served faithfully, had forsaken him. It was during this time that he was especially grateful to Timothy for his faithfulness to him and the gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul reminded Timothy that he, Paul, was not alone in his suffering. However, this was not because of anything he had done it was simply because of the one he served, Jesus Christ. Paul remembered Timothy in his petitions and supplications to the Lord, and his times of prayer reflected on Timothy and all they had experienced as co-laborers in the ministry. As Paul remembered the tears of Timothy, he longed to see his son in the faith so that he could once again experience the joy they shared together. Paul and Timothy are examples of how to build a Christian family and leave an eternal spiritual legacy. He reminded Timothy that he was praying for him continuously because he knew firsthand the persecution that comes with being an ambassador for Christ. 4. Paul reminds Timothy of his purpose and calling. 2 Timothy 1-8-10, God didn't call him in order to fulfill Timothy's ministries. God called Timothy to fulfill his own purposes. Paul first reminds that God saved us and called us with a holy calling. We didn't enlist God, God enlisted us. We didn't set the expectation for God. God set the expectation for us and then Paul reminds that God did not save us according to our works, but according to his own purpose certainly we know that we are saved by grace and not works. Paul is reminding Timothy that God did not save us for our works, God saved us for his works. If you are discouraged because God isn't blessing your ministry like you expected then let it go. God recruited you for his purpose. Your job is simply to preach the gospel here at Ephesus, regardless of the outcome. 5. Paul reminds his dear friend Timothy that the Spirit of God grants Christians spiritual power. As a result, they should not be afraid to associate with persecuted brothers and sisters. Why would Timothy be ashamed of Paul? the Lord's prisoner. What Timothy saw happening to his mentor on a regular basis would probably cause most people to doubt whether or not they could live out this calling. Paul was often imprisoned because the sharing of his faith in Christ was seen by the authorities as disturbing the peace and public order. Paul was often persecuted. Paul said however, join with me in suffering for the gospel. Paul reminded him that they did not do this ministry on their own power after all, but in the power of God. God had saved them and called them with a holy calling. Paul reminded Timothy that their calling was not something they had earned or deserved. It was not because they were qualified necessarily. There is a saying that God does not call the qualified but qualifies the called. God called Paul and Timothy according to his own purpose and grace. And this grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began. Despite occasional feelings of failure, we do not have to feel defeated or ashamed, for we know the one we serve. How can we be unashamed of our faith in a world that is increasingly antagonistic to Christ, his people, and his word? 1. To be unashamed. We must be empowered by God's Spirit so do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, a prisoner for his sake, but by God's power accept your share of suffering for the gospel. 2. To be unashamed, we must accept suffering as from the Lord. 
So do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, a prisoner for his sake, but by God's power accept your share of suffering for the gospel. 2 Timothy 1-8 3. To be unashamed, we must remember that others are suffering as well. And God is faithful, he will not let you be tried beyond what you are able to bear, but with the trial will also provide a way out so that you may be able to endure it. 4. To be unashamed, we must remember the greatness of the gospel he is the one who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not based on our works but on his own purpose and grace, granted to us in Christ Jesus before time began but now made visible through the appearing of our Saviour Christ Jesus. He has broken the power of death and brought life and immortality to light through the Gospel. 5. To be unashamed, we must remember our duty to share the Gospel Matthew 28 hours 18 minutes minus 20 We must be unashamed of our faith because it is our duty to proclaim it. If we don't proclaim it, nobody else will. We are heralds teachers, and sent ones. Christ sends us out like sheep among wolves, Matt 10 16, and yet we must faithfully discharge our duty. 6. To be unashamed, we must invest in God because of this. In fact, I suffer as I do, but I am not ashamed, because I know the one in whom my faith is set and I am convinced that he is able to protect what has been entrusted to me until that day. 7. To be unashamed, we must keep sound teaching 2 Timothy 1 colon 13 14 Hold to the standard of sound words that you heard from me and do so with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Protect that good thing entrusted to you, through the Holy Spirit who lives within us. Conclusion Paul took time to encourage Timothy in the faith. He reminded Timothy of the heritage of his faith and the source of his gift. Paul spoke of Timothy's faith, as unfeigned, meaning that Timothy's faith was honest and sincere. Timothy did not have to be timid in his faith. Paul reminded the young pastor that the God he served does not deal in fear or timidity. He is a God of faith. The spirit of fear does not come from God, for our gracious Lord, you have given us the church, the body of Christ, to give us a place and a people to live out our faith. Help us recall the roots of our faith, appreciate the sufficiency of your gift of salvation, and sense the Holy Spirit working in our lives, that we may rekindle the fire of our faith and be bold in our living, our witness, and serving, through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. Amen.